For this lesson that we're going to be doing, you're going to need this organizer. It's in Canvas for you. So if you haven't yet printed it out, please go back to pause this video, go back to Canvas, print it out so that you have it to fill out as you're going along. Um, in, this, in this organizer, there's a couple of questions that are in there, but for the most part, it's in this table format. So for each of the laws or principles that we're going to go through when we talk about um, relative age, you're going to put in the first box, you're going to say, what is the, what is the principle or the law actually state? And you don't have to use like a word for word definition out of the textbook or anything like that. For this, I want you to say in your own words, what does this actually state? Because I want you to make sure that you understand what the principle and laws are actually talking about. The sketch is where we put pictures to help us remember what that actually means. So the sketch can be something that's very specific to you that's going to help you remember that particular law or principle. So in this lesson, we're going to start by looking at the age of Earth and how do we know how old Earth is and, and all these different rock layers and things like that. In the fall semester, we looked at different types of rocks and how one kind of rock became another. We talked about the rock cycle a lot. There are some rock layers that have been around for a really long time. And we can tell things about the history of our planet based on looking at those rock layers. And we can get some an idea of how long ago some of those things actually occurred. Now, Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. And the processes that are on Earth really do take a long time. When we speak about erosion and weathering, sometimes things happen fast, like you'll see a landslide occur or something like that. But for the most part, things on Earth happen pretty slow. So when we're looking at our geologic time, we need to keep in mind that not everything happens fast. Um, and so sometimes these occurrences have happened and there was no recorded human history during that time. We say that a big asteroid hit the planet 65 million years ago and wiped out all the dinosaurs, but how do we actually know that that happened 65 million years ago? We've got two different dating methods that we'll talk about. But our first principle is about uniformitarianism. And this one, if you look at the word itself, you'll see the first part of the word is uniform. And if everyone's wearing a uniform at school, they all look the same, right? So uniform means same. So the principle of uniformitarianism just means that the same processes that happen that are happening now are the same processes that happened a long time ago. So on the screen, you'll see that the, vol the example of volcanoes we have volcanoes erupting now, so we assume that because the plates have been moving, right, we've still got that those convection currents going on in the mantle. That So we assume that the volcanoes were erupting in the past, too. There's earthquakes now because the plates are moving. There were probably earthquakes back 50 million years ago because the plates were moving. Those kinds of things are the, are the same. When we look at how old something is, there's two ways we can look at age. We can look at age comparatively. We can say, how old is this compared to that? How old are you compared to the person sitting next to you? Are you old or younger? Are you tall or shorter? That kind of a thing. So that's relative. That means that how old are you in relation to someone else? Absolute age means a number. So whenever we talk absolute age, we're speaking about numbers. And this one requires some scientific testing to occur. Relative age is done more eyeballing, if you will. We look at the rock layers, we know that in an undisturbed area of rock, the rock layers that are below it, that are on the bottom, are older because you had to have that rock layer there in order for another rock layer to get laid on top of it. So we let's say the bottom ones are older than the top ones, the top ones are younger. That's different than saying the absolute age and saying Rock layer A is 50 million years old and rock layer B is 30 million years old. So that's absolute age. So we're going to talk about the two different ways of aging something. And in this particular lesson, we're going to focus on relative age. So here's our example. So we've got some kids here and we're going to say, how old are they in relation to one another? And so when we put them in oldest to youngest, Joe would be our oldest, and then Teresa, and then Ellie, and then Shannon, and then Tyler, and then Jason. So this is relative aging. We haven't talked about specific ages at all. We've just put them in order from oldest to youngest. And if I had had you in a classroom, we would have done the same thing with you. When we look at absolute age, though, now we're looking at their actual sequential order by like their birthday, for example. So now we're getting and we would say that Joe is, you know, 
16, well, he's 15 right now, 15 and 11 months and however many days and however many hours. That would give us his absolute age on there. So in our next one, Teresa, on this one, she is 10, um, or sorry, she is 14 years old. Um, and so, and then you could go down to the days and the minutes, okay, as far as absolute age is concerned. So like I said, today we're going to speak about relative age, and we have some laws and principles that help us determine relative age. And we're going to go through each one of these, and these are on your organizer. So our first one is original horizontality. And in this, we're talking about sedimentary rocks. So remember, when sedimentary rocks form, we have weathering that occurs. It breaks down rocks, makes them into little pieces of the sediments. And then wind or water are going to move or erode the, the um, sediments away. When that, so those sediments move into water, like a lake or um, the ocean, the sediments are heavier than the waters. They're denser, so they're going to sink down to the bottom. And, they're gonna do, and then they're going to form layers at the bottom of that body of water. The older sediments are going to be on the bottom, and the younger sediments are going to be on the top. But because they're being pulled down by gravity, they're all going to form this nice layer along the bottom. They're not going to form straight up and down, right? They're going to be laying flat on the ocean floor. So original horizontality means that they were originally deposited in a horizontal layer. If you find you need a little bit more time to fill in your organizer or to take to either write down your description or to take your to draw your picture, please make sure that you take a little time that you push pause in between the different sections. The law of superposition is the one that I call the peanut butter and jelly law. So I call it that because um, if you think about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you have to put the bread down first. So if I were going to make my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I would take my bread, I would take my first slice of bread, and then, because this is the way I make it, I put the peanut butter on, and then I put the jelly on, and then I put the top piece of bread on. So the bottom piece of bread had to be there first in order for me to put peanut butter on it. If it wasn't there, I couldn't put peanut butter on it. And so the rock layers are kind of like that. So this bottom layer of sandstone here had to be there in order for the bright angel shale to be placed on top of it. If it wasn't there, then I couldn't do it. So this, this layer right here had to be there before that layer could be put on top of it. And that's the law of superposition. The layer at the bottom is the oldest and the layer at the top is the youngest. This is an undisturbed rock layer. So where they haven't been flipped upside down or anything like that because of um, of faulting or anything like that. Down here, this little section down here gets a little bit more confusing because that's not an undisturbed rock layer. This one was flipped over. Okay, so this is actually the bottom. This Vishnu, this Vishnu schist, excuse me, is the bottom layer. And this up here is where we get into some of the, the younger layers. So in this one, this is the oldest and this is the youngest, but it was flipped on its side because of some geologic processes that were going on. So there was a fault and then the block of rock moved onto its side. In our undisturbed rock layers though, we know that always the oldest one is at the bottom and the youngest one is at the top. In cross-cutting relationships, it kind of goes along the same lines. So I have to, if I am going to make my peanut butter and jelly sandwich for my kids, then I have to make the sandwich before I can cut it into little sections for them. The sandwich has to be there in order for me to cut it in half for them to eat it. So when we're talking about rock layers, the rock layers have to be there first before we can have a fault or an intrusion come into it. So this is an intrusion. This is an area where magma pushed into the rock. So it didn't come out. It didn't erupt. But magma was starting to move up through the rock layers and melt the existing rock layers, and then it hardened. So it became this area, it's like granite. It became this area that's underneath um, the surface and hardened into rock. So this is called an intrusion. Your fault is going to look like a break in the rock. So the fault line, in order for the fault to be going through the rock, these rock layers had to be there first in order for the fault to go through it. If the rock layer wasn't there, it couldn't have a fault in it. Same thing with this intrusion. We know that from this layer here to this layer here, we could tell the relative age. We know that this is the oldest layer, this is the youngest layer, and then this happened last. So we would say this is in order of age, from going from oldest to youngest, this would be one oldest, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This happened last. The same thing here. Now we could say that all these things had to be there before these ones could be on top of it. So we'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then this is twelve. The fault had to happen after. Now where it gets a little sticky is when the intrusion doesn't go into the rock layers above it. So the intrusion we know because of relative aging has to be younger than all of these, right? From this one down to this one. What we can't say is its age relative to these layers up here. Because since the intrusion doesn't go into those rock layers, we have no way of knowing. Did those rock layers exist, but the intrusion only came in so far because there was only so much magma? Or did that happen? Did the intrusion happen? And then these rock layers were laid down later. We don't know that through using cross-cutting relationships. We can only do that through some of the absolute dating techniques that we'll talk about in the next lesson. Our next law is the law of inclusions. Move this over just a little bit. So the law of inclusions tells us that the inclusion, sorry, I'm not sure why my size of my text is so big. There we go. So the law of inclusions tells us that the little chunks that are held within an area of igneous rock, for example, have to be older than the intrusion itself. So we've got intrusions and we've got inclusions. So this right here, that's an intrusion. We talked about this on the last slide. Oops, I can't finish it off there, sorry. That's an intrusion. So this area has pushed up into our rock layer. So it's granite. This is a igneous rock that came up in there. But when it did that, it melted the rock that was in the middle. Anything that was there in the middle, it melted it. It was so hot, it melted it. On the outside, remember when we talked about metamorphic, metamorphic rock? Metamorphic rock can happen because you're exposed to heat, right? So you're exposed to large amounts of heat where an intrusion comes in. So we have metamorphism that occurred along this line right here because the rock wasn't hot enough to melt but it was hot enough to change a little bit but there were little bits that were harder that didn't melt that were within it and that's what this inclusion is right here so these little bits and pieces in here are chunks of the existing rock that didn't get melted when the magma pushed in so the law of inclusions tells us that the inclusion itself has to be older than the intrusion that it sits within So we're going to look at an example, and I want you to this is I want you to look at it, and we're going to talk about the oldest to the youngest. So I want you to take just a minute. I'm going to pause for just a second, and I want you to look at it, and I want you to decide for yourself what's the oldest and what's the youngest. So in this particular instance, we're going to start with our law of superposition that tells us that the oldest layers are on the bottom and the youngest are on the top. So looking at one through four on here, number four would be our oldest and number one would be our youngest. So if we were going to put these in order and say from oldest to youngest, how did these things happen? This would be, oops, that's not working very well. This would be our oldest, so it would be oldest two, three, four. So this happened first, second, third, fourth. Now, after that, now we have to go to the law of cross-cutting relationships because the law of cross-cutting relationships tells us that if it gets cut through, then it had to be there first. So between one, two, and six, we know that one and two had to be there, and three, for that matter, had to be there. These three had to be there in order for six to cut through them. So that tells us that this is in order, this is number five. 
is that had to happen after this. The last thing that occurred is number five, because number five, because number five cuts through number this one here cuts through this one here okay so we know that our fifth thing that occurred which is this one had to be there in order for this one to go through it so we know that this happened sixth on there and I know that this one here is older than this one here for one reason because six so this one here cuts through that. So I know that this one had to be there, this top layer here, had to be there in order for our number six to go through it. And number six down here, this our number five, had to be there in order for this one to go through that. So this is younger than that. And this, this one here is younger than this one here. Then I know that four had to be there before five. Okay, so this is our order of how things happen. Law of superposition tells me these ones here. Law of cross-cutting relationships tells me about my faults. One of our other principles is about correlation. So in correlation, what we're looking at, correlation is once again a relationship, and we're saying that there's the same rock layer here as over there. And so we say that because they're the same rock layer, they were probably laid down at the same time. And so even though they're further away from one another, we know that they're all the same. And so this is a, the Grand Canyon. You're looking across the Grand Canyon. So you're on either side of where the Colorado River is at. But we have the same rock layers on both sides of the Grand Canyon. So we say that because they're the same rock layers, that we're going to assume that they were laid down at the same time. And this becomes a bigger thing as we look at the Colorado Plateau as a larger area um, and we look at correlations between areas that are much further apart than just across the river. So the Grand Canyon is in northern Arizona, Zion is in southern um, Utah, and then Bryce Canyon is a little bit further north than Zion. So we're looking at, it's called the Grand Staircase, and, we're, and they call it that because the rock layers stair step up in time. So down here, when we're looking at our oldest rock layers that are down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, closest to the Colorado River, we get up to the top of the Grand Canyon, and now we're looking at the rock layers. The same rock layer is at the bottom of the rock layers at Zion National Park. And then it goes up from there until you get to these Navajo sandstones, which are at the bottom of the rock layers um, at Bryce Canyon. So it keeps going forward in time. So as we go down towards the Grand Canyon, we go down towards the Colorado River, we're going down in elevation, and we're going back in time, which is kind of cool. So if you ever hike the Grand Canyon, you're actually taking a walk back through geologic time as you go deeper down into the Grand Canyon because you're passing by older and older rock layers. So when we use correlations, we can use rock layers, but we can also use index fossils. So index fossils are, have to be something to be considered a good index fossil. You have to have been pretty widespread but you had to exist for a short period of time so that we know that it was only during this little fraction of time that that fossil existed. And that's when we can start to, to say that this fossil, even if it's in a different rock layer, that those rock layers probably existed the same period of time because that critter existed during that time. So in this one, some of them you'll see where the rock layers are about on evil and um, elevation levels, but sometimes they're not. And they're in different kinds of rocks. So here, this little guy here that looks like what was it called? A little thing that used to blow in at birthday parties. <laughs> um, it's kind of what he looks like. But you see that even if he's in a different rock layer and at a different elevation, he only existed during a short period of time. So we know that it was during roughly that period of time that the rock layer was laid down. It also helps us look for gaps in the rock layer. So if in this area, right, so in this one you see it goes right from four to six. But in this one we have a layer number five over here, which tells us that something happened over here that we don't see that fossil over here. So either erosion happened, um, which is most likely what happened, and they call it an unconformity, um, where we have erosion that kind of took away one of our rock layers. And it helps us, us to build a more complete picture of where fossils existed um, throughout time. So on your 
handout, you have, oops, sorry, not that. On your handout, we've already, we've gone through all of these, and now you have this block that's on there. So what I want you to do is over on the side of your paper here is I want you to practice. And the ones, the rock layers that you're going to use are the ones that have the letters in them. And we want to put the oldest things at the bottom, the youngest things at the top, and I want you to give a list of what order you think that these things happened in. And then when you're done with that, you can go back into Canvas and there's an answer key there so you can compare your work and see how, how well you did.